In this video, we're going to be finishing the topic of photosynthesis. In the previous video, we talked about the first part of photosynthesis, okay? We know that photosynthesis happens inside plant cells, specifically this organelle called the chloroplast, right? And the first part that we learned about in last video happens in the thylakoid, this little um, disc-like structure, okay? And it's called the light-dependent reaction. Okay, because it depends on sunlight. Now, the light-dependent reactions, after it happened, um, we saw that the light-dependent reaction creates two important molecules, two important products called NADPH and ATP. Okay, so both of these products are created right outside of the thylakoid because the thylakoid was used, all of these structures were used, but these molecules were, were created right outside of the thylakoid. Now, right outside of the thylakoid is all these empty spaces here, okay? And these empty spaces is called the stroma, okay? Now, we're gonna take these two molecules because they're very important. Like, they were made because they're gonna be used now in the light-independent reaction, okay? They were made in this light-dependent reaction, but we're gonna take them and put them into this, this treasure chest because we're gonna use them to explain the next part of photosynthesis. Now, here we have um, uh, the chloroplast, right? But it's so crowded, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a simplified version of it. Okay, here we have it, and we're making it a bit bigger. Okay, we made it a bit bigger, and we're gonna focus on this image here. Remember, we just said we created these two molecules, ATP and NADPH. Okay, and they were created where? right outside of the thylakoid, okay, right outside of the thylakoid. Now, all these empty spaces that I just mentioned before, this is called the stroma. Now, these two molecules are going to be used in the light-independent reaction, okay, which is the second reaction. And the light, another name kind of for a light-independent reaction is the Kelvin cycle, because that's what happens. This Kelvin cycle is what's going to happen in the light-independent reaction. Now, these two molecules, ATP and NADPH, uh, is not the only things we need, okay? We need some other things. These two were made in the thylakoid during the light-dependent reaction, but there's some other molecules we need that's also going to take part in the Kelvin cycle. So what are they? One will be carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is something we exhale, right? We exhale a carbon dioxide and inhale oxygen. So the carbon dioxide that we exhale will be sucked up by plants, okay? It will go into their cells and then into their chloroplast like this, okay? So now it's going to hang around in the stroma. So now we've got three important molecules. Now, these three molecules are going to work together in the Kelvin cycle to make glucose, okay? Because we know the purpose of the, of the photosynthesis is to make glucose, and we haven't done it so far yet. The light-dependent reaction did not create any glucose for us. So that means it must happen in the Kelvin cycle. So to explain the Kelvin cycle, we're going to zoom in to this little segment right about here, okay? We're going to zoom into this, make this real big so everything is really big and easy to understand. So let's get into that. So we zoomed in. Here we have it. We In the chloroplast, here's the th um, thylakoid, and here's the Kelvin cycle, which we'll explain. So, where to start? We're going to start with a car, okay? I'm going to give you a little story, because this story is going to help you remember the Kelvin cycle so much better, okay? So we start off with this car on a road, because this is a road, right? So here we have a car. This car is going to represent a molecule, okay? A molecule. Specifically, this molecule has five carbons in it, okay? This molecule is made up of five carbons, okay? And two phosphates, okay? So for our story, to explain the story, carbons will represent people, okay? So this car has five seats, so five people can fit in, okay? And this phosphate will represent fuel, okay? How, how much power the car still has left, okay? So this car is full, okay? This molecule, this is the structure of the first molecule. And I'll talk about the names later. We're just going to go over the story for now. So this car is driving, and by the side of the road is a little molecule called carbon. Okay, carbon. Okay, he's going to rep represent a person. 
and he's waiting for this car to arrive. So once this car arrives, this car is going to pick him up. He belongs to this to his family here. These are his friends, man. These are his friends. They want to hang out. But so what happens is he gets in the car, okay? And once he gets in the car, so he jumps in the car now. Now the car has six people. It's really crowded, okay? This molecule has six carbons now, okay? It's really, really crowded. Now, now this molecule, I mean, now these people in the car are going to be like, mm, it's too crowded. Let's just wait for another car and then um, split um, us up into three and three, okay? So they wait for another car. But this car that comes has no, has no, um, they uh, has no uh, power. It has no energy in it. So they got, they're going to have to take some of this fuel and give it to the other car. Okay. So that's what they do. The other car comes and this is what happens. So they decide to go three and three. Three people in the one car and three people in the other car. Because um, now it's more space. Okay. They can still chat to each other, but it's not so crowded as it was before. And now each of the cars have half the fuel. Okay. So they're not as full. So they're going to drive now towards a little place. Um, where they can pick up some energy. So, in terms of the molecule, the molecule, okay, this was a molecule, right? And this molecule is unstable. So, it decides to split apart into two identical molecules, okay? Two identical molecules, each with three carbons, okay? So, the molecule basically split in half. Now, in terms of our story, these cars keep driving and they reach now a place, okay? Let me show you this. They reach now a place, okay, an AT, uh, uh, a gas station, okay, this, they're going to pick up some fuel at the gas station, okay, um, in the story, it's a gas station, but for the science, we know this gas station represents some ATP, okay, we know ATP is a molecule that has three phosphates, one, two, and three, we can see, right, one, two, and three. Now, ATP is, gonna, is a molecule that's going to transfer some phosphates to these molecules. Okay, it's going to give them a phosphate. In terms of our story, these cars are gonna, now going to get fuel. So they're going to get fuel. They're going to get full. Okay, so how do I show this? Here we go. So now these molecules picked up some fuel. Now they're full. You can see they have two phosphates. They're recharged. Okay, so when this ATP gives up its phosphate, it becomes ADP, right? It becomes ADP. Now, now we have these cars. They are fully, they are, they're full of fuel, okay? These molecules are now, now both have two phosphates. Now what's going to happen is they're going to, their wheels are quite flat. So they're going to go to a place to pump it up. Now, as they drive to this place that where they can pump up their tires to, so that they can continue driving, um, they run out of some fuel because this place was a bit far. Okay, so, sorry. So they each lose, essentially, one phosphate. They each lose fuel. So now they get to this place, okay, and they pump up their, their, their tires. Don't worry about what this is, what the purpose of this one is. I'm going to explain the purpose of this um, pumping up tires uh, stage um, very soon, okay, because it's very relevant. So now these molecules is going to go to, um, is going to, go to this uh, place where they're going to get pumped up their tires. So what do I mean by pump up their tires? This place represents NADPH. Okay, so the molecule, the NADPH molecule that we, were, that we formed during the light dependent reaction is going to take part now because we saw the role of ATP, right? What the, does NADPH do? NADPH is going to transfer a, hydro, uh, a hydrogen, okay? Uh, um, uh, an, an H towards these cars. And in our story, we're going to say their wheels are being pumped up, okay? So now these cars, their wheels are being pumped up, okay? The, the wheels are being pumped up. So you can see now they have big, big wheels. So now they have big wheels. Now what? What's going on? So now they have these big wheels. And they get to this intersection. And there's one road going left, one road going right. Now, what we need to remember now is that the left road is very, very uncommon to take. And the right road, so completing the cycle, is very common. So specifically, what you need to remember is every sixth molecule will take the left road 
and the other five will take this road. Okay, so every six molecule will go left and the rest will go right. So if we're talking, we're talking about one Kelvin cycle here. We're only doing one cycle. We've done one cycle. So we only, only have managed to have two of these cars or two of these molecules. So if I told you just now that every six car okay, will take the left road and the rest will take the right road, then will any of these go left? No. Okay, both of these cars will take this road. They will go, they will go down here. Okay, because I said every sixth molecule will go left. Now, if we repeat this cycle, okay, so we do it another time, so let's do it times two. Now, we will, we will have had, the, um, from the first cycle, two cars pass. Now the next cycle, another two cars will come. So now it's been four cars. Will any of those two pass in here? No, because it's only been four cars. Now, how about three times? If we repeat the cycle one more time, now it will be total six cars. Two from the first, two from the first round, two from the second round, and two from the third round. Now, will any of those cars go left? Yes, one of them will, because that is total six cars, meaning the sixth one will go left and the first five will go right. So after three full cycles, after three full Kelvin cycles, we managed to get one car here, okay? One car. We managed to get one car to turn left. Only one. The rest went right, okay? I'm not going to put... Um, five cars here, it's going to make everything really crowded. But after three cycles, know that we managed to get one car to, to go left and five cars to go right. Now, what happens to this car that goes left? This car that goes left is destined to form glucose. Glucose is a six-carbon molecule, okay? A six-carbon molecule um, um, that is different from this, this molecule. This is a six-carbon molecule, but it's not glucose. It's the wrong molecule we need to form another kind of six carbon molecule called glucose. So this one is only three carbons. So how are we gonna form glucose with only a three carbon molecule? That's right, we can't. We need another one of them. So how, are we, how many cycles will it take to get another of these cars to come in here, to take the left pathway? It's gonna take another three cycles, right? Because if it took three cycles for one car to come in, it's gonna take three more. So a total of six cycles will allow two of these cars to enter the left pathway okay so now we have two of them after six cycles we managed to get two of these molecules to take the left pathway now these two molecules are going to combine together okay they're going to combine together to form glucose so in terms of our story this means that these two cars decided to um find to to rather the, these people decided to rather get out and find a bigger car and get into that bigger car, okay? Okay, so now, here, let me show you visually. So these two molecules combine together to form a big molecule. See, this car, or this molecule, is stable with six carbons because it has six spots. This molecule, remember, only had five spots, so it wasn't a stable molecule, whereas glucose is a molecule that has six spots, six carbons, and it's stable. So C, we managed to now form one glucose. It took, it took six Kelvin cycles to form one glucose molecule. So that's really it. If you can remember this an, um, analogy, then you're pretty much set. All you're missing now is some names and some small other, other details. By the way, um, when these cars go down here, right, the majority of the cars that return down here, they get converted back into this molecule here, into this one the original molecule, um, but they only get converted. You notice how they ran out of some phosphates. They get converted back into this molecule with various steps, but at the IB level, um, you don't need to know all those steps. You just need to know that ATP is required to fill up their tanks again, okay, to give them phosphates again, because you see this molecule here has two phosphates. So in order to turn this car back into this molecule, we need to give it some phosphates, but also we need to give it some carbons but you don't need to know the mechanism by which it gains two carbons to form this molecule. All you need to know is it needs some ATP, okay? So this it's unfortunate, but at your level, there's a lot of details that the teachers will skip out on because you simply don't need to know them. We don't want to confuse you extra. So I'm just going to help you with this diagram that will help you remember the process a bit better. So let's get to the names. So here we have the same diagram, right? Um, but this is one cycle. Okay, one cycle. So we haven't done six yet. 
Um, doesn't matter, anyways. So the first molecule is called RUBP. RUBP, okay, rubulose biphosphate. And where does the carbon come from? Remember I said there was a carbon by the side of the road? Well, guess what? It comes from carbon dioxide. Remember how I said over here that um, humans exhale carbon dioxide, right? And the plants take it up. So that's the purpose of it. The carbon dioxide that gets taken into the, into the chloroplast is going to be used for this sake. Okay, so the carbon dioxide is going to donate. Oh, no, wrong, wrong diagram. The carbon dioxide is going to donate its carbon, okay, to form this six carbon molecule. You don't need to know this, the name of this six carbon molecule. Lucky you. Um, when this molecule splits apart into two molecules, you need to know this name. This name is called glycerate 3 phosphate. Glycerate 3 phosphate. Now, when this molecule gets filled up with some ATP, you also don't need to know that name. But when this molecule um, um, receives NAD, NADPH, when the NADPH donates uh, hydrogen, you need to know that, that step. So let me show you. Oh yeah, first of all, let's label this last one, glucose. Simple. So when the tires are pumped up, so when the molecule gets donated um, by the NADPH, it's called triose phosphate. Okay, triose phosphate. That's another name you need to know. So overall, three annoying names and then one you probably know already. Okay, so last part here. So remember how I said um, six cycles is required to make one glucose. So I'm going to now clearly show you an image of how the Kelvin cycle looks like um, if it's done six cycles, okay? Because this is the diagram the teachers typically show you. So now it will make sense. So to make six cycles happen, we need six RUBPs, not just one, like, the, like having one cycle. We need six. We don't just need um, one carbon dioxide. We need six. So by combining the six carbon dioxide and RUBP, we will form six of this unknown molecule. And then this molecule will split into two, each of them. And so if six molecules splits into two, how many molecules do we have? Twelve, right? Because each molecule got split into two. So now, how many ATPs are we going to need? Twelve, right? Because each car or each molecule is going to get donated one ATP. Okay, one ATP will get donated. And in the process, remember, ATP gets turned into ADP. So now we have 12 of this other unknown molecule that you don't need to know. And then we get to a point, remember, where they get pumped up their tires. And in, our, in the real science world, that just means the hydrogens get donated from the NADPH to become NADP+. Plus, okay? And how many of these NADPHs are we going to need? 12, because we have 12 molecules that are going to receive this H. And now, remember, after six cycles, two of the cars would go down the left pathway and ten of them would have gone down this pathway, okay? Because one in six take the left road. And now the molecule that is formed when the hydrogen gets donated, so when the wheels get pumped up, this molecule, and so basically both of these molecules taking the left or the right road, they are called triose phosphates, okay? And when they combine together, it forms glucose. Finally, we've got quickly two more keywords. So the process of this molecule combining, so RUBP combining with carbon dioxide to form this molecule, the six carbon molecule, is called carbon fixation, okay? Because we are fixing this carbon into this, into this molecule to form a six carbon molecule. Now the enzyme, notice I put this image here. This is, represents an enzyme. An enzyme is something that catalyzes or allows a reaction to happen. So it this reaction between carbon dioxide and RUBP doesn't happen magically. It happens through an enzyme. So this enzyme called RUBP carboxylase or Rubisco is going to is going to allow or going to take this carbon dioxide and shove it into this car. It's going to be the thing that catalyzes or makes the reaction happen, okay? Without this enzyme that um to open or to work, this car can't be converted into this one. So is that it? Is that actually all the information? Yes, it is. So this is all you need to know. At the end of the day, know that it took six turns of the Kelvin cycle to create one glucose molecule. But this wouldn't have been possible without ATP, NADPH, and carbon dioxide. NADPH and ATP came from the light-dependent reaction.